2013. Wow. What an amazing year for games. And hey, it's the end of the year, so why not do a top 10 2013 game list? I got the suit and the, the greased up here, so I'm ready to go. Before I begin this top 10 list guys, as far as biased opinion goes, a top 10 list is probably the most biased opinion you will ever find. So this top 10 list is going to be a top 10 list of games that I personally like. Doesn't mean that you should like them, it just so happens that I personally prefer these, and these 10 games particularly stood out to me. Keep in mind that these are also top 10 games of, that I particularly played. If I haven't played a game this year, then it won't be on this list. That being said, let's get right to it! First one on the list actually took me by surprise because I really don't play these types of games this much and to be honest, I wasn't really looking forward to it all that much. But of course, this is going to be going out to... Injustice Gods Among Us. Holy crap, this really took me by surprise, being completely honest. I had no idea a fighting game could be this addictive. Just imagine how much fun it is to go to your friend's house, pop this game in, playing it with your friends. I mean, one guy is being, you know, Batman, the other guy is Superman or whoever else is in the DC universe, and just duking it out. It is so much fun. Yes, the story itself is forgettable. That's one of the reasons why it's number two on this list. But nonetheless, the multiplayer will keep you hooked. It is so much fun to just sit down, play this game with friends, and thus why it landed a spot on this list for me. Number nine. Number 9 is also kind of a bit of a shocker for me at least, because firstly I had no idea they were going to make this game for consoles, secondly I had no idea it would be this good, and of course that goes out to Diablo 3. I'm not just going to be saying it's Diablo 3 for the Xbox, I'm also saying it's for Diablo 3 in general, for the PC and 360. Because they're pretty much uh, the same game, well not the same exact game, but very very similar. But why is it so much fun? It's mainly a lot more fun with friends. What's really awesome about it is just being able to level up, getting all these awesome abilities, and just the, the game itself looks amazing with all of its uh, textures and everything else. It just, well, you can just tell all the little details the game designers put behind it. I thought they did a pretty good job with it. And plus, it just has really addicting gameplay. For the most part, it's just a hack and slash, and kill this, kill that game. But it is so addicting when you sit this down with friends as well. And especially when you get a lot of people with you, like at least four people, just going around and doing quests, unlocking stuff, leveling up. It is so fun, and it's so easy to just play this for countless hours. No. Next up on this list is a game that I particularly could play at any point in the day, still have a lot of fun playing it, and of course again, just a lot more fun to play if you have someone else that has it. That goes out to Saints Row 4. I had no idea this game would be as addicting as it would have been. When I first saw the trailer for this, I was like, really? Superpowers? Really? That's kind of weird. But it's Saints Row. It's, it, it almost makes sense. It has to go over the top. It has to be absolutely crazy. It has to keep you hooked. The superpowers just make it so much more fun. What's also kind of ironic about it is that when you have a lot of friends doing this game with you and you're just running around the city of all these superpowers, it's really like the best Justice League game ever made. <laughs> and it really is. I mean, yes, of course, the story isn't that strong. The game's graphics themselves don't look absolutely amazing, but let's be honest, we don't care about graphics anymore. I mean, they are a bonus, but we really don't care. But the gameplay itself is so damn fun. Just running around with superpowers, blowing shit up, it is addicting as hell. And the story is on purpose not supposed to be super amazing. It's supposed to be the gameplay, in my opinion, that's the most important aspect of the game. Saints Row 4 nailed that, so congrats, it landed a spot on this list for me. And next up on this list is the exciting third chapter in the super scary sci-fi franchise, Dead Space 3. Wow, I had no idea it would have this huge of a leap over the last two games. I mean, the last two games were, in my opinion, just okay, especially the first game. 
The second one, they've actually made it a lot better, especially the controls. Because I personally, just in my opinion, I did not like the controls in Dead Space at all. Just to change a weapon, you know, open up this menu, select the one you need, and all this, it was a mess. The second Dead Space game, it definitely picks it up a lot more. And the third Dead Space game, I think they perfected it. Not only is it a lot easier to just change weapons at the tap of a button, but you can customize them. You can customize your gear a lot more, customize your weapons like crazy. The game looks beautiful, especially during the, the, uh, the snowy tundra levels. Those are awesome. The boss fights. Ooh, those boss fights. They are so awesome. Definitely on par with some of the most exciting boss fights we've had this year. And thus another reason why Dead Space lands a spot on this list. And number six, I gotta give it to Battlefield 4. And why? Well, the multiplayer. Enough said. I seriously could pick this up any point in the day as well and just play its multiplayer with friends or just random people online. I think the story, of course, let's be honest, is pretty forgettable. It's pretty short. No one really cares about it much. To be honest, I don't even know why they put the story in these games anymore. Just put in multiplayer and people will buy it. I don't even know why they put the campaign in there, but whatever. The multiplayer in this game is so freaking awesome, guys. I mean, just running around either in a tank and a jet, which is what I usually do, or just upgrading your gear for your soldier, whether it's, you know, what types of guns you want, what types of class you prefer, and the maps look are great, the, uh, the game itself looks great, the gameplay itself is addicting, the multiplayer is just so damn fun, especially, I've actually had a chance to play it on the PC, and you can put so many people in the game lobby at once, just imagine having dozens of people in the same lobby, on this giant map, on this beautiful looking map, uh, if that, and it's just absolutely addicting as hell to just play that for hours. Easily, when I was playing this on the PC, had no doubt it would definitely land a spot on this list. <laughs> Next up, my fanboyism is going to be reaching out to this, but I don't care, it's my top 10 list. Goes out to Assassin's Creed 4. I really felt this is, in my opinion, this is the best Assassin's Creed game they have made to date. Yes, better than the last three of, well, yeah, three, four, five of them, however many there are, not even including the ones that are on the portable systems. But definitely, I think this is the best Assassin's Creed game to, to date. Definitely a lot better than Assassin's Creed 3. Definitely on par with Assassin's Creed 2. I think Assassin's Creed 2 had its own tone to it, and this has its own tone to it as well. But definitely, this is my personal favorite, simply because the map itself is enormous. Being able to explore, do whatever you want, upgrading your ship, upgrading how you look, your weapons, your gear, it's just so addicting. I really liked how you were able to craft like better equipment for yourself, kind of like what they did in Far Cry 3. Ubisoft definitely had their, uh, had their ideas from that and put it into Assassin's Creed 4 to make where you upgrade all your stuff, where you have to go out and hunt animals, things like that. I really think the game actually looks the best. It, uh, it's the most addicting to play, just to sit down, stay on of your ship, and just blow other ships up. It is so addicting. Exploring cities, exploring areas you haven't seen before. The multiplayer is, of course, the most improved out of the last Assassin's Creed games. So I definitely love the new multiplayer they put into it. A lot more maps, a lot more stuff to do, a lot more abilities you can use. Overall, the best Assassin's Creed game to date, and definitely deserves a spot on this list. And these next games, they really hit me. They hit me right here, guys. These, these next games are just like, whoa! Crazy awesome. And the next spot on this list is yet another game that took me by total surprise. I had no idea it was going to be this good, and I gotta give it to Tomb Raider. Holy shit, I, when this game came out, I honestly was not really anticipating it. I wasn't really looking you know, much into it, because the last Tomb Raider games, in my opinion, were just okay, but then this came out and I was like, damn, I could not stop playing it. I don't know where to begin with how amazing the game itself is, whether it's how it looks, the gameplay, just everything about it I adore, and even to this day, even it being almost 2014, 
I still play, I still think it's great. I can't wait for the remix version they're gonna put for the next gen consoles. That's gonna look gorgeous. And I really, really, really want them to make a sequel to this game because it was just so addicting. And it was just such an exciting time to play. A lot of people do criticize this game's multiplayer for being an Uncharted ripoff. A little bit, that's debatable, but it's still fun. As long as it's fun, I like it. The single player itself, definitely deserve the spot on this list for me. Alright, number three and number two were so tough for me to decide. I knew what my number one game is, but number two and number three, I was like, uh, no, this one should go here. No, wait, this one should go here. I did this back and forth for hours and hours. It was so tough. Just letting you guys know, these next two games are super, super amazing. And the number two spot is barely one over number three so just keep that in mind both of these games are great but as we all know there can only be one winner so number three i gotta give to bioshock infinite what do i need to say <laughs> of why this game deserves a spot on this list whether it's just the overall improved gameplay uh just the, the way the game looks itself the character development the writing just everything about it was so Perfect. I really felt that with this Bioshock game, they really landed how Bioshock should be. I love how they took, you know, some aspects back from the previous Bioshock games, what made them great, implemented them into this Bioshock Infinite game, and just I love the new city itself, where you're in the sky and the skyhooks. I was worried about the skyhooks, like, oh no, the skyhooks. They're gliding around on rails, they're gonna fuck it up. But no, it really, really does help you out in gameplay. Whether you're in a really tight spot and you gotta get away from there quickly, or even just like super cool looking kills. Just being honest, just imagine being on a skyhook and then you see an enemy below you, you just press one button, you dive down and you go, Hah! It is so addicting as hell. I could not put this game down, how to play it from start to finish. The ending was kinda weird. In my opinion, I thought the ending was weird, but the ending was artsy. Meaning, um, I felt that they, the way they took with this ending was very... They wanted to kind of have like this art-ish feeling to the ending. So it's not really a problem with me, it just looks kind of weird. But, needless to say, this game was absolutely amazing. Definitely picked it up, it's a must-have for this year. Two, another game that has a lot of the same aspects as Bioshock Infinite has, but just barely a little bit more. That I had to give out to The Last of Us. Wow, what an amazing game. I seriously cannot put this down either as soon as I got my hands on it. The character development, the, the way the game looks is beautiful. Definitely one of the, if not the best looking PlayStation game I have ever seen. The, uh... Just the gameplay itself is also very addicting. You can be stealthy, you can go guns blazing, the crafting system is really fun and addicting. Definitely my personal favorite aspect about the game is the character development. Ellie has to be probably the most interesting character I have ever seen in a game. Being, you know, this little scary little girl to this really, like, really strong survivor. Kind of like how Laura Croft was in the Tomb Raider game and kind of like how Elizabeth was in Bioshock Infinite, but Ellie is just this really, really young little girl. She's like still in her teenager years, and that really hits you hard when you just see her grow up and become like this really strong survivor. And you know, you playing as Joel, the main character as the game, really felt like I gotta protect her. You as a player actually want to protect Ellie. And in my opinion, where a game can actually make me tear up a little bit, I'm not gonna lie, this did, definitely has to hit a spot on this top 10 list somewhere. Yeah. So I know a lot of you are probably wondering, dude, where is that on the list? Why hasn't he said it yet? It's either not gonna be on this list at all, or it's gonna be number one. Of course, my number one game of the year for 2013 goes to, let's be honest, we all saw this coming, <laughs> come on, who can blame me? 
I mean, yes, it's a little bit typical, but I don't care. It's my top 10 list, so I think it is definitely game of the year. The game looks beautiful. It is leagues better than GTA 4. I don't even know where to begin, where it's just the map itself. Los Santos is enormous. It is so detailed. The biggest map to date. Rockstar was not kidding on this that it's the biggest map to date. It is huge. There's so much stuff to do, whether it's checking out the city, there's the uh, wilderness and the desert, the characters are awesome. Being able to play as three different characters at once is so awesome. Being able to just switch between them anytime, see what they're up to, is so addicting. The gameplay itself is leagues better. I love how they add in the weapon wheel so that you don't have to toggle through the D-pad to find your weapon. You can just press and hold the trigger button and it shows you all these different weapons on this wheel. A lot like Red Dead Redemption, that's where they got that from, thankfully. So they definitely took that aspect and put it in GTA 5. Thought it was perfect and just overall super addicting gameplay. The story in my opinion was also the best, doing all the heists. The heists were absolutely amazing. I seriously, after I beat the game, it gives you the option to replay those heists. And I love being able to go back to those and picking different choices of how exactly you can go about of doing those heists. They are very addicting to do and it's very interesting to see the different paths you choose to see how that actually plays out in the actual mission. Even the small things, just like picking your crew, picking different crew can also have an impact on the mission. And that in and of itself is very addicting. And if the story, the single player for whatever reason doesn't hook you, the online aspect will definitely hook you. I don't know where to begin with GTA Online, whether it's just how fun itself it is, uh, all the quests, all the missions you can do, all this stuff. It is so addicting just being able to play with your friends, buying your own apartment, your cars, your weapons, leveling up. You really do want to level up because the game greatly rewards you for leveling up. Honestly, leveling up, in my opinion, isn't the easiest thing to do, but once you do, it is so satisfying when you get a lot of stuff unlocked and you can use all that stuff you unlocked. It really helps you out. And all the missions, it's crazy how many missions online you can do. And the game types, the whether it's the uh, deathmatch, the, uh, the survival, just a ton. There's a ton of different game modes you can play. My personal fun is one called Top Fun, where one team is in a bunch of fighter jets, the other team is in motorcycles, and the team in the motorcycles had to get to the other side of the map before the people in the jets blow them up. That is so addicting. Overall, amazing game. I seriously could go on about it for hours, but I'll just leave it at that. In my opinion, GTA 5 is definitely game of the year for 2013. Well, that about does it, guys, for my top 10 games of 2013. So what were your top favorite games of 2013? Go ahead and leave a comment below and let me know what you thought your top 10 games of the year were. We're excited to see what uh, games you guys preferred the most. And I'm really excited to see what 2014 has to bring us. We'll follow these next-gen games coming out. And there's going to be a lot of games coming out in just the spring and summer itself. So definitely stay tuned on my channel because I'll be doing a crap ton of gameplay videos from those games. So stay tuned for that, guys. As always, be sure to subscribe.